In this video, I'm going to derive the equation for um, the speeds after a collision given two objects, M1 and M2, um, and those are their masses. And we're going to start off with the case where we have uh, one object moving and the other one stationary. I'm going to assume an elastic collision so that, that way kinetic energy is conserved. So we write down the kinetic energy before m1 v1 before squared plus zero there's no kinetic energy of the second object and then we have one half m1 v1 afterward squared plus the kinetic energy of the second object m2 v2 afterward squared and momentum is always conserved uh, so we end up with m1 v1 before plus zero is equal to m1 v1 afterward plus m2 v2 afterward. Now I'm looking for an equation to get v1 and v1 afterward and v2 afterward in terms of all the others. Um, so I'm going to solve for v2 afterward and then plug in from the momentum equation and then plug that into the kinetic energy equation and then solve for v1. It's just messy algebra, but, um, but it's straightforward. So I'm going to start by, by uh, uh, solving for uh, v2 afterward. Um, so v2 afterward is equal to m1 v1 1 before minus m1 v1 afterward all over m2. So I just brought this term over and, um, and then divided by, by m2. And this simplifies a little bit to m1 over m2 v1 before minus v1 afterward. Okay, now I take this and plug that into the kinetic energy equation. And I'm going to get a, a pretty big mess, uh, but so we'll start over here. 1 half m1 v1 before squared is equal to m1 half m1 v1 after squared plus 1 half m2 and then we're going to square this thing, which is m1 squared over m2 squared times v1b minus v1a squared. Okay, and now I'm going to expand this out. I can notice also that a few things cancel. Clearly these one halves all cancel, and we get, uh, um, and we're going to get rid of some m1s. Um, in this in this case, there's an M1 gone, M1 gone there, uh, and, and an M1 gone there. There's an M2 that, that gets rid of an M2 right there. Okay, now I'm going to expand this out, and I get V1B squared is equal to v1a squared plus we, we end up with a in m1 over m2 v1b squared minus plus v1a squared minus 2v1a v2a All right. Now I'm going to bring the M2 over, and and then and then collect all the terms. So so I'm interested in, <coughs> excuse me, I'm interested in 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 the variable v1a. So I notice that it comes in as a square. So I'm going to I'm going to collect all those terms together. So when I multiply by M2 across the board, what I what I get is an M two here and an M2 here and then I get rid of that one there. Okay, so now I'm going to collect all the V1A squared terms. So there's a V so so there's one right here and there's one right here and notice there's an M2 and an M1. So so what I get is I get M1 
plus m2 v1 a squared. That gets those terms. Now I'm going to look for just terms with just v1a, not v1a squared, and there's only one of them, and that's right here. Okay, and so that gets me that gets me a minus 2m1 v1b times v1a. Okay, and that gets uh, um, and that gets me there. Um, Oh, I noticed a typo. So, so this this has to be um, v one b plus v one b squared v one a squared minus two v one a v one b. Okay, so that gets me there. So then that 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 makes sense. Okay, now I collect all the terms that don't have any v one a. Uh, at all in it. So I've taken care of that term now. Now the ones that don't have any V1A is one's right there and one is right there. And I get um, plus M1 minus M2 V1B squared equals zero. Now this is a quadratic form so we can think of this as A x squared plus b times x plus c equals zero, and I know the solution. I might be able to do this from with some you know fancy um, uh, factoring, but I'm just going to uh, run through the um, the quadratic equation for 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 this one. So what I get is I get negative b plus or minus square root of b squared, which is 4m1 squared v1b squared minus 4ac m1 plus m2 m1 minus m2 v1 b squared. That's all under the square root. All over 2a. So all over 2 m1 plus m2. This is the speed of the first object afterward. Okay. We expand this out. Notice that a v1 b squared comes in twice we get we get a, a 4 we get and so when we take the square root we're going to get a, a 2 v1 b so that 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 comes in there and then we get a, a, a kind of a big mess under un, underneath um, so let me so let me just let me just do that um, 2 m1 v1 b plus or minus 2 v v1 b that's from the from the square root and what we're left in the square root is an m1 squared minus m1 squared minus m2 squared quantity and you can start seeing that a lot of stuff is canceling out m1 plus m2 equals v one a okay the twos all cancel um, and this turns into an m2 so what we get is we get this is equal to m1 plus or minus m2 all over m1 plus m2 times v1 before equals v1 afterwards. Now, notice there are two solutions here. One of them is m1 plus m2 all over m1 plus m2. So, so solution number one solution number one has v1a equal to v1b. And then, and then if we plug in from before v2a when we look above we get that's equal to m1 over m2 v1b minus v1a 
and that's equal to zero. So this solution is the first object just keeps going, passes right through the second object, the second object is not affected. So this is, this is, this is uh, solution number one, and this is what would be called the trivial solution, and we don't really, you know, and it's really unphysical. Um, and, and so we don't, we, don't, we don't use that one. So solution number two is really V1A is equal to M1 minus M2 all over M1 plus M2 times the previous B, 1B. One, one and then when we plug that into this, what we get is V2A is equal to M1 over M2 V1 before minus M1 minus M2 all over M1 plus M2 times V1B. So that means this is equal to M1 over M2 V1B 1 minus, and then this quantity, M1 minus M2 all over M1 plus M2. And finally, we get this is equal to M1 over M2 V1B um, times 2m2 over m1 plus m2. I got that by making 1, m1 plus m2, just do the common denominator and then add. Um, and so, so, we've, so we end up with v2a is equal to, notice, notice the uh, um, m2's cancel, and I end up with 2m1 over m1 plus m2 times v1b. So our final equations for solution number two is that one and this one.